In this video, I will run through the lesson activities in the Hello World application lesson and show you how to create your first application. So to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and open up Eclipse. Now I placed my ADT bundle folder in my home directory, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Start and go to my username, and I'll find the ADT bundle folder. So I'll just double click that, I'll double click inside there, and what I want to do is look for the Eclipse directory. So I'll double click Eclipse, and I'll find the application to run. And it does say application here, and you should see the icon for Eclipse. Just double click that and choose run. Now you will be prompted for the workspace, and it's currently being saved in my workspace. And you can see it's my username and then workspace. And this is the default location, and this is where I want it to be saved. So instead of it asking me every single time, I'm gonna go ahead and choose use this as the default and do not ask again. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now that Eclipse is open, I'm going to go ahead and create a new application by choosing File, New, and then Android Application. For the application name, I'm going to go ahead and type in Hello World. Now notice the application name does allow for spaces between the two words. The project name does not, and it's automatically been filled in for me. And then the package name is going to be the reverse of our URL. Basically it's going to be the top level domain first, so com, and then dot example dot hello world. If you're developing this app for a business and do plan on publishing this on Google Play, then you want to make sure that you have a unique URL that you can use to differentiate this app from any other app on the market. So for this lesson I'm going to go ahead and just leave the default com dot example dot hello world. Now the minimum required software development kit currently says API 8, which is an older version of Android uh, called Froyo, Android 2.2, and that's the minimum Android operating system that our code will currently run on. I'm going to go ahead and leave this one default for this app as well. The target currently says API 18, which is not the most recent up-to-date Android operating system, which is currently 4.4, but I can choose whether or not I want to use the latest or an older version. I'm going to go ahead and choose the latest operating system, which is currently in the development of this lesson is 4.4 KitKat. And then I'm going to go ahead and compile it with 4.4. I'm going to be taking the source code that I'm going to be writing, compiling it with the latest capabilities of Android. And then the theme I'm just going to go ahead and leave as default. And I'm going to choose next. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next again. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next another time, and then next one more time, and now finish. And this is going to set up everything I need to be able to create my first application. And now when Eclipse loads, I have the two most important files that I'll be working with throughout this particular section, and that is the activity main.xml, and then also the main activity.java. This is where my source code will be entered, and this will be the layout that I will design my application. By default, when we use the wizard to create our application, we have a fully functioning, fully working application that we can now run. Before we can do that though, we actually need to set up the Android virtual device so that we can run this in an emulator. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the icon for Android Virtual Device Manager. It looks like an Android phone. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit New. And I'm going to go ahead and give this virtual device a name. So I'll just go ahead and call this one Hello emulator. And the name doesn't necessarily make any difference, so you can name it whatever you want. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose the device that I want, and I have a wide variety of options to choose from. Now I will tell you that if your computer is a little older, it may have a hard time running some of the larger options. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a safe option for me to run, and that's going to be the 3.7, the WVGA option, which is a 480 by 800 resolution. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I do not need to configure any other options as far as the front or back camera with, with my computer's current camera. So I'm going to go ahead and leave everything else default. And one thing that I noticed, and you may see this as well, is that I had a space in my virtual device name. Hello, space, emulator. And they do not allow for that. So I need to take that space out. There we go. And that corrects the error. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. And I can go ahead and close the Android Virtual Device Manager. And now we can actually run this already created application for us and see how this whole process works. 
So to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and right click on Hello World in the Package Explorer. And I'm going to go find Run As. And I'm going to choose to run it as an Android application. Now it may take a moment or two for the emulator to load. Now it did take several minutes for it to load on my computer and the performance of your computer could greatly determine the load time of your emulator. And maybe this is a good time for me to mention, if you check the appendix of this course, you should be able to find alternatives for the emulator. One in particular is called Jenny Motion, which I would highly recommend, as it runs the Android device in a virtual box virtual machine, and it runs very quick and is very responsive to the user's interaction. However, I will be using primarily throughout this course the emulator provided here through Eclipse, but I do encourage you, if you want a faster emulator, to check out Jenny Motion. So now to begin with, I need to unlock my application. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the lock to unlock it and drag it over to the right. You will need to hit the OK button to begin with, so I'll go ahead and hit OK. And your application should load automatically. You have successfully created an Android application, compiled it, and have ran it in an emulator to test it. Now I do know that this application doesn't really do a whole lot, but congratulations. And in the next couple lessons, we're going to go ahead and continue to build upon this application.